Classroom of the Elite is a series of multiple pieces of media, which each having a unique telling of the story. It has an anime adaptation, a manga adaptation, and a light novel as the original source. But with each piece of material being unique, that would also affect the main character of Classroom Elite, Kiyotaka Ainokoji. Let's compare each of these, to not only figure out which adaptation is the best at betraying the series itself, but which has the best version of Ainokoji. Light novel Ainokoji versus manga Koji versus anime Ainokoji. The anime adaptation of Classroom Lee is quite faithful. In terms of facial features, it's stated in the light novel that Anakoji's face is unchanging and has the features of a doll. We see this in the anime, where Anakoji goes about his business with a face reeking of stoicism, which often leads to him getting remarks about how robotic he looks. But when we delve into his personality, it's much more interesting. In the anime, at first, Anakoji just seems like a quiet and reserved individual who is more than he lets on. But in the season 1 finale, we come to find out that he's seemingly cold and uncaring, and doesn't mind using his classmates and friends as a pawn. As long as he's the winner in the end, all will be fine. From then on, the viewer's perception of Anakoji in the anime is altered forever. What we originally thought to be a quiet and reserved individual is now a calculating and seemingly borderline sociopathic child with a high level of intelligence, both intellectually and emotionally. It's a misconception that Ainakuji cannot understand emotions in any way. He's a master at reading people, and perceiving even the slightest change in a person's psyche. Which comes to shine during the first few episodes of the anime adaptation's take on the Zodiac exam. When Kei was being bullied by Manabe and her friends, she didn't put up the usual tough girl act that she always puts on in class. She cowered and was on the verge of tears. Many people would just assume that the situation itself was what caused this result. But Ainakoji knew right then and there that there was something deeper. As the episodes go on, Ainakoji still has that cold and ruthless persona to him as shown in the anime. The light novel also still has this, but there is much more depth. And that's the problem, depth. The anime does a poor job of getting into depth with Ainakoji as a character. The average person watching the show would assume that Ainakoji is not only a sociopath due to his trauma of being brought up in the white room, but he cares about nobody and will use as many people as he can to achieve his goals. And it's not just Ainakoji that seemingly lacks depth and character in the anime, it's also multiple people. Students like Sudo, Kanzaki, and even Ryuen are seemingly one-dimensional. The reason is due to all the politics and staffing issues that come with anime adaptations. When it comes to making an anime adaptation, so many things have to be considered. Most notably, the pacing in Classroom Elite's anime is quite poor. They rush volumes that are meant to build up the tension between Anakoji and the other students, character building, and even skip out on details regarding class exams, which hurt Anakoji not just from a writing standpoint, but in terms of feats as well. It makes it seem more like all Anakoji does is manipulate him and her, and boom, we pass, when there's more to it than that. The series itself has many psychological elements, yes, but there is also the intellectual elements where Anakoji's genius is truly able to shine as well as his creativity as he finds loopholes in exams and situations that can lead to the best outcome. But due to the anime rushing it all, it just seems so plain. So overall, Anakoji anime's visually is adapted faithfully. His face is mostly stoic with the rare chance of him being nervous or slightly surprised. However, in terms of character and especially his inner monologues, which are the most important when it comes to his character, are just not there. But okay. We've touched up on anime Ainokoji, and slightly hinted at light novel Ainokoji, but what about manga Ainokoji? Well, since the manga for Classroom Elite has two versions, one that adapts year one of the light novel, and the other that adapts year two, I will cover both. Firstly, year one of the manga is even worse than anime Ainokoji. In terms of facial expressions, Ainokoji is highly expressive and comedic almost coming off as some sort of rom-com manga protagonist. People have argued that manga Ainakoji is how Ainakoji sees himself. I've argued that. <laughs> Anime Ainakoji is how he actually looks alongside how others see him, and light novel Ainakoji is him in his truest form, someone capable of expressing emotions like surprise, anger, etc. While this theory does sound cool, it's just not true. The reason why manga Ainakoji is expressive and has emotions is that the manga is simply another adaptation of the series. Therefore, it's represented through the lens of another author, aside from Kenegasa. Not to mention, the manga mainly covers the first three volumes of Classroom Elite, and in the light novel, Anakoji's inner monologues and even dialogue was far more different than how it is current. This was because Anakoji was putting on the facade of him being a normal high schooler. We see this facade at its peak when he gets excited alongside Ike and Yamuchi about seeing the girls in their swimsuits during swimming practice, fawning over Kushida's good looks and personality, and even finding Horikita attractive, stating she looks very mature for someone of his age. All of this, however, was simply 
an act. The normal high school facade was a mask for Anikoji to don to avoid suspicion and hide his true personality, that of a Machiavellian. Just as he did in Volume 3, Manga Anikoji drops this cliche teenage high schooler persona and starts to have a more stoic expression as shown in the anime. Though Year One's manga seems to either be discontinued or still ongoing, but not fully translated. However, fans had something else to grasp onto, which was Year Two's manga. Year Two's manga is a very faithful adaptation to the light novel in terms of story and art style. Anikuji's facial expressions aren't as exaggerated as in Year One's manga. His personality is the same as Anikuji in the light novel. There are of course comedic moments sprinkled throughout Year Two's manga, but they were never as exaggerated as Year One's manga. Year 2 Anikoji is simply a better version of his predecessor, Year 1 Anikoji. The art style especially is what makes Year 2's manga adaptations so great, as it's not plain and one-dimensional like Year 1's. Year 1's art style is like a canvas that's 50% complete. There was definitely some sort of idea in mind when it came to creating an art style and sketching, but it never came to fruition. It's simply an unfinished, inferior product. Now compare that to Year 2 and its whole new painting with a clear vision in mind. There is so much detail on each of the characters, even with how they stand. Horikia's pose is that of a reserved, calm, and intelligent leader. Kei's pose is that of a regular high school, fitting along the guru girl archetype. It's open and playful, just like her character. Nanase is a bit of both. She's not all the way open like Kei, but she isn't all the way reserved like Horikita. Anikoji's design is quite literally a step up from not just Year One's manga, but arguably the anime. His facial expressions are down to earth, his features as well. He doesn't have the goofiness of his Year One counterpart, and he also isn't overly serious like his anime counterpart. He simply looks like a normal quiet high schooler. He really just gives off the light novel vibe. He just looks chill. The facade he always intended to put up amongst his peers. I could go on and on, but from comparing the images alone, it's clear which art style and manga is superior. But how do they all compare to the original? The light novel. Last but not least, we have the original source of Anikoji's design and character, which comes from the light novel. While I won't go as in depth with this character as I've done in previous videos, I will highlight his personality and character design. Anikoji's light novel design is unique in the sense that it's simple, but has so much detail. What I mean is that, at first glance, and assuming you had little to no knowledge of the series, you wouldn't think anything extreme of Anikoji. You just assume he's a regular high schooler who tends to be thoughtful and reserved. Even after you realize his true nature, you still wouldn't think anything differently of him. Anikoji doesn't look like a genius or a monster. Sure, the way he styles himself with a grey winter coat worn over a green sweater with a dress shirt implies he likes to dress in a mature and modest style fit for a teenager at a school for the elite. But that aside, he simply looks like a normal human who wants to live a peaceful life in his new environment. But that's the beauty of the light novel, because there are many illustrations of Anikoji, and those many illustrations can turn a character who looks harmless into someone who looks cold and calculating. Like the illustration of Anikoji being ruined on the rooftop, standing over Yuki as she mercilessly weeps for his help, and even the illustration of Anikoji revealing his true colors to Kei, and even the Nangamo one with Anikoji. And the way that the illustrations can detail Anikoji can go from the calm to cold fits perfectly with his character. But what makes the light novel so much better than the anime and manga. It's because it has the thing that both materials lack, depth. As the original source, it has all the freedom to go as in depth with Anikoji's characters as possible, including side characters like Sudo, Harakita, and Hirata. All the side characters in the light novel get their own shine, development, and focus. Unlike the anime where they rush things, or the year one manga where it's hard to be focused with the unappealing art style and Anikoji's goofy persona. The light novel just has a different feel to it. Take account to Anikoji's introduction that he gives in volume one. Um, well, my name is Anikoji Kiyotaka, and uh, I don't really have any special skills or anything. I'll do my best to get along with all of you it's, uh, nice to meet you. His introduction in the light novel comes off as fast-paced and awkward, which should be normal for a new high school student. After all, you're in a new environment surrounded by new people, and so being nervous is a given. But as the volume goes on, we learn that Anikoji doesn't have the best social skills, but at the same time, there's always an excuse to cover for it. He's somewhat of a loner, and since he finds it hard to talk to people, he doesn't find himself in many social situations. Hence, he has a difficult time navigating them. But the way it's played off is that of a normal teenager. If you're someone who likes to think hard, you may find it suspicious that his social skills are that bad, but even then, there's no evidence to come up with a conclusion. It's something you have to accept, but later on, we come to learn that Anikoji really isn't as normal as he portrays himself to be. He's the survivor of an experiment created to make geniuses from children with even the most inferior DNA. The survivor of the fourth generation of the White Room. Multiple generations in the White Room focus on different things, and Anikoji's generation doesn't focus on developing social skills. That was the focus of the fifth generation students of the White Room. 
who are shown to be able to navigate and control social situations effortlessly. Take Yagami is so good at this that he establishes himself as Class 1B's leader. The point I'm trying to make is that due to the light novel, going in depth, what was once something that was overlooked now forms into an answer. Aina Koji has bad social skills because he never gets the chance to develop them in the white room. However, one thing that people forget is based on volume zero, he managed to adapt like crazy in the white room. His adaptability is insane, that of an anomaly. That's why he's called the X. He's an anomaly in Japanese society. So even with these bad social skills in the curriculum, in the light novel, you begin to realize that Anakoji's social skills increases. And even K notes it way later on that Anakoji's social skills almost seems like a facade because of how direct he is being with her, like a leader. She begins to notice the different sides of Aina Koji, and Aina Koji later states later on that he was that of a blank canvas, waiting to be painted. And the anime makes his introduction speech in class how it should be, a student giving a monotone speech about his interests as well as his name. But the light novel tricks you into thinking it was just some sort of cliché, and that's what makes the light novel so good. Aina Koji is a walking contradiction, with so much mystery shrouded behind him. There are answers to everything, and they go incredibly in-depth. One of the most in-depth topics is Anakuchi's character, an individual who wants to be normal, wants to live a quiet high school life, but can't, because he always finds himself reverting to his true nature, and that of a white room student, almost like a defense mechanism that reveals itself when he's threatened. His true personality leaks out, someone who is cold, manipulative, and will do whatever it takes to make sure he's the victor, but even that in itself is more complicated, and the light novel does a good job of this. Even after, Anakuchi's origins have been revealed, it just leaves the reader with more questions. He's a complex individual who's also contradictory. As I previously stated, even though he wants to live a quiet life without showing off his skills, he has to do so to solve his problems. Has to save Horikita from her elder brother? Physical skills are required. Has to defeat Manabu in a race? Physical skills are required. Has to defeat Ruin? Physical skills and intelligence are required. Has to help Airi? Intelligence and manipulation is required. He has to make his class come first in the first Unhabited island exam, intelligence, manipulation, and physical skills are all required. And so, the harsh reality of Ainikoji in the light novel is Ainikoji wants to experience friendship, a normal high school life. He wants to feel not just what being in love and to be loved feels like, but he also wants to learn what it means to be a human of the outside world. He's curious because he has never experienced any of this. Because of 15 years of detachment from emotion, thanks to the white room and that man, everything for him is just data at this point, information. And without data, he will always come to the most logical conclusion to solve a problem or to combat a threat. That is what he was designed to be. An example of just how logical Anakoji is can be seen in how he deals with Hirata in the light novel. Hirata has lost all hope of reaching class A due to the results of the class poll. He's been reminded of his past, especially with how a student got signaled out and targeted. The most normal thing to do would be to console Hirata and let him take his time to get back to where he once was. However, in Anakoji's case, the logical thing to do would be to highlight Hirata's flaws brutally. He showed Hirata how incompetent he was, and compared to the other class leaders like Ichinose, he was able to get through the exam without a single classmate being expelled. He told him that if he had decided to be the leader of the class, he had to take that responsibility to the end. He reminded him what he was meant to be. No matter how inhumane Ainakuji was to Hirata, the results he achieved were a success. Hirata went back to the way he was, even better than ever, with a new outlook and mindset on it all. So out of all the takes on Ainakuji in terms of personality, writing, art style, and even feats, which is the best version of Ainakuji? Well, it would go like this. Light novel, year one slash year two, over manga, year two Ainakuji, over anime, season one to season three Ainakuji, Koji over year one Ainakoji. The reason for this ranking is simple. In most cases, it's nearly impossible for the original to be surpassed by a different take. The light novel is the original source of Ainakoji in all aspects, and it does a good job when it comes to depth, character design, and personality. Light novel Ainakoji is what he's meant to be, a complex character who also tends to be contradictory. Since the light novel is the original source, the feats remain the same, and the feats he pulls off in the light novel are insane, such as not only completing, but surpassing the teachings of the beta curriculum, the hardest curriculum created in the white room. The human limit was stated to be the sixth level, and the beta curriculum was level 10. He has a fighting record of 127 wins and 17 losses. Defeated and surpassed all the martial arts instructors of the White Room, who were stated to be masters in whatever they taught. Arguably, one of the greatest feats in the series was expelling Yagami, the best student of the fifth generation of the White Room without ever meeting him face to face. To do this, it required extensive planning, not to mention he had to assess Yagami's personality to find out how he thinks and would react to the plan. And this would be borderline impossible to do, considering Anakoji only had ever one interaction with Yagami. And at the same time, Yagami was only using his own facade of a normal first year student, which should make him even harder to read. Yagami also had knowledge of future exams in advanced searching high school, as well as memorized personal information of over 156 students, which should have made all of his plans and strategies to expel Anakoji much easier. Despite the disadvantages Anakoji had, he still 
Angel came out on top. This wasn't meant to downplay Yagami either, as despite losing to Ainakoji, he was still a formidable opponent. He was not only able to evade attention from Ainakoji and other students, but keep Ainakoji guessing in regards to his true identity. I'll go more in depth on this in Ainakoji vs Yagami, but that's a future video. Year 2's manga Ainakoji is next. What puts him over anime Ainakoji is the fact that he's faithfully adapted and given a proper art style. Classically, anime tends to skip content from the light novel and rush over explanations of exams, which causes Ainakoji's feats to be way less impressive than it really should be. This is not a problem in the year 2's manga in the slightest as it remains consistent with the light novel. The art style as well is also consistent, which can't be said for the anime, as many scenes involve plain bad animation. Anime Ainakoji is next and in the position he's in due to the reasons stated above, but also because pacing and lacking depth, the pacing of the series is far too fast, which leads to characters lacking development necessary to make them unique and interesting. Characters like Kanzaki, Nagamo, and even Ryuan don't get the necessary episodes to further explain their goals, motives, and why they are the way they are. Anime Ruin could be simply be seen as a crazy jerk who wants excitement in his life. But there's more to it than that. Ryuan is an individual who before facing Ainakoji never felt fear in his life. We see the first instance of this when he killed a snake as a child during a field trip. The students and even the teachers were afraid, but Ryuan was not. From that day on he realized he was fearless, which helped with his ambition. No matter how many times he was battered, bruised, or outsmarted, he would always come on top. He'd come back relentlessly until he became the victor. It's how he established control over Class C, and in the light novel, it stated he fought Albert every single day until Albert got tired and submitted to him. Only when he fights Ainakoji does he feel fear for the first time. It's not because Ainakoji is strong, smart, or even beat him. It's the fact that while he has these abilities, while he's beaten Ryuan so badly, he can barely open his jaw or see straight. He states he feels nothing. Ryuan tries to goad him into letting his anger consume him, just like all the other individuals he's fought have done. But Ainakoji feels absolutely nothing. The defeat of Ruin is nothing more than a mundane task to him, so much so that the fear is ingrained into him going forward. Now that is how you write an antagonist and give him depth, but the anime doesn't do that. They skip over the most important details which causes characters like Ryuan to be misunderstood. And last but not least we have year one manga Ainakoji, and I mean do I really have to explain why he's last? He's downright goofy, the art style is terrible compared to the others, and while it does a decent job at adapting the light novel, it just doesn't have that unique feel surrounding it like the other adaptations do. Year one manga Ainakoji is just downright bad, that's all. So. To conclude, yeah, Light Novel Koji Stomps, and obviously for my other rankings, you know earlier. Thanks for watching.